Today, we're breaking down the subtle signs of undiagnosed diabetes, signs you may be able to spot on yourself. But why should you care? Well, one in four American adults with diabetes are completely unaware they have it. And if we catch it early, we can prevent all the issues we're about to discuss. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly what to look out for so you can take charge of your health. Okay, so what is diabetes? Simply put, diabetes is a condition where your body has trouble managing blood sugar levels. Normally, a a hormone called insulin moves sugar from your blood into your cells where it can be used for energy. But when you have diabetes, either your pancreas stops making insulin, which we call type 1 diabetes, or your cells become resistant to insulin and stop responding properly, which we call type 2 diabetes. In both cases, sugar builds up in your blood over time, and this causes irreversible damage to your blood vessels, nerves, and organs. Since type 2 diabetes is far more common, that's what we're going to focus on in this video. All right, let's get into the symptoms. So one of the most common signs of diabetes is frequent urination, also known as polyuria. Patients tell me this is most noticeable at night when they're suddenly waking up multiple times a night to go to the bathroom. This happens because as blood sugar levels rise, your kidneys have to work harder to filter and absorb that excess glucose. At a certain point, they can't keep up and excess glucose spills out into your urine, dragging water with it. This not only leads to increased urination, but also a state of dehydration and increased thirst. So it's a vicious cycle, pee more, drink more. And as you can imagine, trying to hydrate with sugary drinks like juice or pop just makes this worse. Okay, now grab a mirror because we're gonna focus on some signs of diabetes that you can see on your skin. First up, Acanthosis nigricans. This is a skin condition characterized by dark, velvety patches that you can usually find on the back of the neck, armpit, or groin. Most of the time when you see this, it's a sign of insulin resistance. Basically, your cells stop responding to normal insulin levels. So your pancreas responds by producing even more insulin. And when insulin levels rise, they activate insulin-like growth factor receptors in the skin. This stimulates the growth of skin cells like keratinocytes and fibroblasts, particularly in areas with high friction like the armpits. And that's what causes the thickening and hyperpigmentation of the skin. So if you notice these changes, it could be an early warning sign of diabetes. Here's another sign to look out for. Skin tags. Just like Acanthosis nigricans, these little skin flaps can show up in areas of friction where skin folds together, like the neck, armpits, and groin. While they're usually harmless, having multiple skin tags can be a sign of insulin resistance. All right, now let's talk about infections. Diabetes can create the perfect environment for bacteria and fungi to thrive because high blood sugar levels literally feeds these little organisms, helping them grow and spread. Plus, consistently high sugar levels significantly weakens your immune system. This can show up on the skin as abscesses or yeast infections. But it doesn't stop there. Remember how excess glucose can spill out into the urine? Well, that's one reason that people with diabetes are far more likely to develop urinary tract infections. And yes, that affects both men and women. Did you know that high blood glucose can literally cause your tendons to become coated in sugar? So what would that feel like? Let's start with a quick test. Put your hands together like you're about to pray. This is normal. But if your fingers can't fully straighten or your palms aren't touching, this is abnormal and it's called a positive prayer sign. And this can be caused by diabetic chiroarthropathy, also known as diabetic stiff hand syndrome. And it's directly related to high blood sugar. Excess sugar actually binds to the proteins in your skin and tendons in a process called glycosylation. Remember this term because we're gonna talk about it more later. The sugar coated soft tissues in your hand become thick and less flexible, which limits the range of movement. On a few occasions, I've actually seen this mistaken for arthritis. Let's take a look at this published case report. A 52 year old woman came into the office with pain and stiffness in her hands. This is the x-ray of her hands. Her joints look totally normal with no sign of arthritis. Although her joints were fine, the pain and stiffness was coming from the sugar coating of her tendons and soft tissue of the hand. Another common issue that can be triggered by diabetes is called trigger finger. It occurs when one of the tendons that bends your finger gets inflamed. Patients will often come in with their finger stuck in this position, and then when they try to extend it, it sort of snaps into place. The condition got its name from that unmistakable snapping sensation. Once again, this is caused by glycosylation of the tendon, this time impairing the tendon from gliding smoothly. When I'm examining a patient with trigger finger, I can usually feel a lump 
at that level of the first crease of the finger. That's the A1 pulley, and that's usually where the tendon's getting caught. And I'll typically treat it with a steroid injection to decrease the inflammation around the tendon. But in some cases that doesn't work, and it requires surgery to get that tendon moving smoothly again. Something similar can happen to the shoulder, called adhesive capsulitis, or frozen shoulder. And that can cause a tremendous amount of pain and stiffness, which can last for years. But beyond joints and tendons, diabetes can seriously impact your nerves. High sugar levels are toxic to the nerves themselves, and also to the tiny blood vessels that supply nutrients and oxygen to the nerves. As the nerves become damaged, you might experience numbness, tingling, or pain, particularly in the hands and feet. This is known as neuropathy. You might be thinking, well, having numb hands and feet sounds uncomfortable, but how bad can it really be? Well, you don't realize how important the nerves are in your feet until they aren't working properly. Neuropathy actually changes the way you walk, leading to an abnormal weight distribution along your foot. When you can't feel your feet, you're not aware of the excess stress and injuries that occur. We call these micro traumas, tiny little fractures that develop in the bone. Because people with diabetic neuropathy can't feel the injury, they continue to walk on it, which prevents it from healing. And to make matters worse, they also have decreased blood flow to the feet and slower wound healing because of the diabetes. This is a slippery slope, and over time, it leads to dramatic structural changes to the foot. And this is the end result, called Charcot foot. Notice how the arch of the foot is completely destroyed, and it now has a rocker bottom appearance. This is a classic finding, and it actually doesn't take that long for it to happen. This first x-ray shows a fairly normal foot position. Just 10 months later, the shape of this person's foot had changed completely. And although this x-ray looks terrible, and this can be a debilitating condition, many people with Charcot foot don't complain of any pain, which really tells you how severe the nerve damage in diabetes can be. And while we're on the topic of feet, did you know that diabetes is the number one cause of non-traumatic amputations? People with neuropathy can easily cut their foot without noticing it. And high blood sugar, weakened immune system, and poor blood flow is the perfect environment for bacteria to grow. I remember one night when I was on call, I saw a patient who came in with fever and altered mental status. He was diagnosed with sepsis and admitted to hospital. When I examined him, I found an awful infection at the bottom of his foot, and right at the middle of the wound, there was a tiny staple, like a regular office staple. He had no idea there was anything wrong with his foot. Not only had he not felt the staple go into his foot, but he wasn't even aware of that severe infection. Anyone else would have been screaming in pain and would have come to the hospital much sooner. And and unfortunately, this isn't a rare case. I see this kind of thing all the time in the hospital. An injury to the foot becomes an ulcer, which gets infected, and that infection gets into the bone. And then ultimately, in severe cases, that can lead to amputation. And that's why I recommend that anybody with diabetes should be looking at their feet every day and inspecting for cuts, blisters, or nail problems. And it's not just sensory nerves in your feet that are affected. Diabetes can also slow down your digestion a condition called gastroparesis. Damage to the nerve supplying your stomach causes it to empty more slowly, which causes bloating, nausea, and vomiting. It can make meal planning difficult, and it can also cause blood glucose levels to be really erratic because of delayed absorption of carbohydrates. So how do we diagnose diabetes? In the past, doctors would actually taste a patient's urine to check for sweetness. Thankfully, we've come a long way since then. Today, diabetes is a pretty straightforward diagnosis. The best test is called hemoglobin A1c, and it tells you about your average blood sugar level over the past two to three months. Here's how it works. Just like your tendons, the hemoglobin in your red blood cells becomes glycosylated over time. So sugar literally attaches to your hemoglobin. And the higher your blood sugar, the more glycosylation occurs. By measuring this, we get a sense of your average blood sugar over the past two to three months, reflecting the typical lifespan of your red blood cells. This is really helpful because blood sugar levels fluctuate widely throughout the day depending on what you eat and your activity level. So just remember that a hemoglobin A1c test is far more useful than a random blood glucose test because it's an average versus a moment in time. And a hemoglobin A1c of 6.5 or higher puts you in the diabetic range. So who should get tested? Certainly anyone with the symptoms that we discussed should be tested right away. But 
What about everyone else? Well, there are a lot of different opinions, but the American Diabetes Association recommends that everyone has their hemoglobin A1C checked at least every three years, starting at the age of 35. And you should consider starting earlier or testing more frequently if you have any risk factors. So that's a good place to start. Now, how to prevent diabetes. Now this could be an entire video, but here it is in a nutshell. Diet can be complex and you hear lots of different things, but remember these four principles. High fiber, complex carbohydrates, less sugar, and fewer processed foods. Exercise is really important and you need to do both cardio and strength training. Doing this will help you maintain a healthy weight, which is also important to reduce your risk of diabetes. And if you smoke, this is the time to stop. Diabetes is manageable. Ideally, we wanna prevent it, but if it's gonna happen, we wanna catch it early. So if you've noticed any of the signs that we've talked about today on yourself, or if you're over 35 and you haven't been tested, then don't wait, reach out to your doctor today. So if you wanna learn more about your body and other signs to look out for, then I'd recommend checking out this playlist where you can learn about your tongue, skin, nails, all sorts of good things. Stay curious, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next video. So, bye for now.